lots of discussion after the British Grand Prix, and rightly so, about why McLaren fitted hard tyres to Lando Norris's car at the restart. The restart engendered by the advent of the safety car, which was initially virtual safety car, all of which was brought about by the problem with the Ferrari engine in Kevin Magnussen's Haas. So there were 19 laps to go, and it seemed a no-brainer. It seemed that everybody would run the soft tyre. Well, Lando didn't. They put the hard on the McLaren. I think a lot of people raised eyebrows at that point, not the least of which was Lando, because when he was out there in the formation laps again behind the safety car waiting for the restart and asking what tyres everyone was on, and he heard that Lewis behind him was on the softs, he said, oh, great, wonderful. Sarcastic, classic Lando. But the question is, why did McLaren do that? And did that lose him the Grand Prix, or was it a great call? I think a lot of people superficially look at the results and say, oh, well, if Lando had been on the soft, he had the pace, maybe he could have won that race. But what a mistake by McLaren. I actually see it the other way. I think they made a really good call to put him on that hard tyre, uh, particularly in the light of this incredible run that George Russell did on the soft tyre and the other Mercedes from the start of the race on a full load of fuel right through to lap 29, far exceeding the expectations of everybody in the pit lane and particularly of Pirelli. And he was pretty competitive right up until lap 29 as well, not far away from the McLaren lap time. So it seemed on the basis of that, and with only 19 laps to go, that it would be, as I say, a no-brainer to go to the soft. So why did McLaren go to that hard tyre? And what ultimately was the effect of doing that? Well, I think the answer to why is, is a two-part answer. One, it's the first time McLaren had been super competitive with both cars, both cars right in the operating window for their tyres as well. One of the reasons they were so quick all weekend. Not that they won't repeat that in future, but it was absolutely in sync at Silverstone. And so McLaren, in that situation, you could argue kind of took the conservative route because things have a habit of changing in the last five laps at Silverstone. We've seen that in the past. They had the homework on the hard tyre. And I think above all, they probably wanted to give Lando a tyre that he could lean on in order to try to do something about Max. And I think that was it. I think they, they would argue it was a slightly conservative choice. But on the other side of the coin, you could say, well, it's quite an aggressive choice because if they wanted to give Lando a tyre, as I say, that he could lean on. But I think it goes deeper than that. And this is the other part. And that goes back to Friday to FP1 and FP2, really the only day on which any data was accumulated in terms of what the tyres were going to do in the race and putting together long runs. Because on Saturday morning, as we know, they did their sort of set-up runs. They went out on the light fuel. And then by the time they got to the point where they could have run for data, they the rain came. And so they knew that on Friday. So everybody condensed Friday into set-up and then try to get as much race data as possible. Well, Max Verstappen, of course, and Red Bull did that ahead of everybody else. It took about five minutes to get the car set up, put fuel in the car, and then they sent Max out. And they did so on the hard tyre. Now, this was going to be an interesting moment. This was an interesting moment for everybody because, A, this was the first time anyone really would have seen the new Pirelli construction, a stiffer, harder construction, commensurate with the rising energy and, and G-loading of the, of the current cars. First time anybody would have really seen that with a set amount of fuel on board and being able to judge how quick or not that tyre and how consistent that tyre was going to be. So let's have a look at exactly what Max did on that run in the back end of FP1 on Friday on the hard tyre. And disregard for a minute the column headed Norris, because that was FP2. Just look at what Max did on that run with the hard tyre. 33-4, 33-3, 33-5, 33-5, 33-8, 33-5, 33-1, 33-3. Unbelievably consistent. Now, a lot of that, you could say, well, that's Max Verstappen. That's how good the car is. But I think even if you take those parameters, you can say, if there's deg, we're going to see it. And there was no deg. It was just a great, strong, very, very powerful run on the hard tyre. And nobody put together a long run like that in FP1. FP2, as I say, everybody got their act together because they knew potentially it was going to rain on the Saturday morning. So we saw more than any other Grand Prix this year, we saw virtually everybody out there doing race simulations, putting fuel in the car, doing runs. So let's just go to another graphic now and look to see what everybody chose to run in that FP, that condensed data accumulation FP2. You can see there, lots of, lots of guys on the medium, lots on the soft, only one driver on the hard tyre. Lando Norris. Now, at this point, I'd say full marks to McLaren for splitting their options because Oscar Piastri was put on the soft tyre. And I think it says quite a lot about Piastri standing within the team already that he was going to accumulate the soft tyre data 
Lando the hard tire data, and it was going to be mixed between the two. Free flow of information. And it shows the confidence they have in Piastri that the data that he was going to provide was obviously going to be realistic enough for Lando, Lando's team to make plausible and objective decisions about where to go over the weekend. So that's the first point that needs to be said. So just to recap, they ran the hard on Lando Norris, possibly having seen what Max had done with that tyre on in FP1, and they put the soft on Piastri. So let's have a look at how those two then matched up in FP2 on Friday in identical conditions, and you can see from the top speeds as they go across the start-finish line that they've got the same amount of fuel in, they're doing virtually the same time across the line, So, because fuel load always affects traction out and acceleration out of a corner. So if they're both doing 292, 293, you know they're both running the same amount of fuel. So Lando Norris, on his run on the hard tyre, found the same consistency as Max Verstappen, and also, got to say, pace, because look at what he's doing, 34-0, 339, 339, 340, 343, 342, 347, 338. Look at Oscar Piastri in the effectively the same car on the soft tire, which should be what, three, four tenths quicker? It should be. 342, 345, 347, 348, 351, 348, 351. This isn't traffic. This isn't problems, other problems. This is a consistent, this is consistently slower than the hard tire. 34.7, 34.2, Okay, he finishes with a 32.9, but look how he achieved that 32.9. He's done a lot of running in the, in the, on the tyre already, so he's got the heat cycle somewhere near where you would expect it to be. But then he has the luxury of doing a 53.6, which you would never have in the race, of course, in order to let the tyres cool a little bit, and then he does his 32.9 to show that the deg hasn't gone away. But in order to do it, he has to do that really slow lap. So if you look at that, you think, wow, yeah, that hard tire, what a race tire, go for it. Now let's just go back then to see how Lando's hard tire run in FP2, different conditions compared with that of Max Verstappen when the track was a little bit greener. As you can see there, the top speeds for Lando going across the start finish line measurably slower than those of Max, more than you would expect the difference between the McLaren and the Red Bull to be. So got to assume that at that point there's more of a headwind, probably. Track conditions have changed. So let's not read too much into those numbers in brackets, other than that they're both on heavy fuel. So let's go back again. Max is doing 33.4, 33.5, 33.5, 33.8. Let's look at what Lando's doing on the hard tires. 33.9, 34.0, 34.3, 34.2, 34.7, 33 33.8. 33.6 without having to do a slow lap beforehand the tires are coming in they're going really well and I think I think that is where they made the decision ultimately not then but I think it's because of that run that they made the decision to put him on the hard tires at the back end of the Grand Prix now let's have a look to see whether it was the right decision bear in mind that ever since Max had passed Lando relatively easily with DRS in the early stages of the race, but it, but it had been quite edgy. It had a lot of pressure from the McLarens in the opening laps. But ever since then, Max had been able to pull away with very judicious driving, no mistakes anywhere, a little bit here, tenth here, tenth there, giving back a tenth, maybe sector two, gaining a couple of tenths at sector three. It was that sort of thing for about 20 laps on the medium tires at the start of the race. He would gradually managed to pull away two seconds became 2.3, 2.3 became 2.5. It wasn't 2, 3, 5, 7, which we've often seen when, when the Red Bull's pulling away from, I don't know, what the Ferraris or the Mercedes and other Grand Prix. This was very tight, and Max had to be absolutely on his game to get any sort of gap over Lando Norris. And he got it up to about seven or eight seconds. Lando had been having a bit of <laughs> a little bit of chat on the radio about how the tyres were and they were sort of gently saying to him you're losing a bit of ground to Max do you want to come in what do you think about tyres and he kept saying no nah, it's okay it's okay just let the balance is good which I think all credit to, to Lando for staying that cool in that situation because he knew how good the car felt basically and he knew he had a race car and still as is often the case at Silverstone anything can happen and something did happen the safety car and here I think I'd like to say McLaren Played their master stroke. They put him on that hard tire. Now, initially, after the after the safety car had gone in, of course the red tire on Max's Red Bull and on Lewis's Mercedes looked very strong. And 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 Lando would be thinking, wow, you know, we should be on the soft. But literally, within one or two laps, 
the McLaren found its sweet spot again and it was really good on those hard tyres. And it wasn't long after that that Max was on the radio saying, ah, the car doesn't feel that good on these soft tyres. And Lewis is saying, ah, the rears are going away. And all of a sudden, yes, Max pulled away from Lando and he got it up to the high three second mark. But then for the first time since Lando had lost the lead much earlier in the day, for the first time, he started to get back some ground from Max Verstappen. And so it was to the end of the race, a 10th year, 10th there. He started to gain on him because the car felt solid on the road, because it was really working those hard tyres, as we'd seen in FP1, beautifully. Now, I think that had Max been on the hard tyres at this point, he probably would have pulled away from Lando. That's why I say I think it was the right choice for Lando, because it brought him that near to Max in a Red Bull that wasn't that comfortable on the soft tyres. And also it allowed him to beat Lewis Hamilton on the soft tyres. I mean, at the restart, you thought, wow, for the first time in a long time, Lewis seems to have lucked into a situation where he's gained track position and he's on the right tyre. But he wasn't. I mean, maybe for the Mercedes it was. I mean, maybe their grip level and their balance, therefore, wasn't good enough to justify anything other than just going for it with the soft tyre. Ferrari took the other extreme with Charles Leclerc. They brought him, having already stopped him on for, a, for a set of hards, they brought him in for the safety car for a, a second stop and put him on the medium. And I think a bit like Mercedes, that's because they didn't really have the grip level that they expected to have or wanted to have. They were playing around probably with front wing flap and they had understeer and oversteer. And in that situation, what you don't really want is soft tyres that can go off quite easily. So they put him on a set of mediums, which was not a great choice for Ferrari's point of view. I think Mercedes did the right thing. They sort of flipped the coin, put the soft tyres on Lewis to see what would happen. And I think Ferrari should have done the same thing. I'm amazed they were that conservative because they had nothing to lose whatsoever. Anyway, that's not really the, the topic for this video. The topic is how good Lando was over the last five laps of the British Grand Prix and how he only lost that race by 3.7 seconds and he beat Lewis Hamilton on the soft tyre. I think that says a lot about that tyre choice, about McLaren right now, and of course, about Lando Norris.